Good afternoon, everybody. It's about 2.35 Pacific time. Today is Wednesday, the 29th of November. Hope everybody is well. All three markets slightly muted to lower today. You can see the candle actually first on the NASDAQ composite. Uh, seemed like it started the day really strong. Uh, 135 points up at one point of time. Look at that. It was up 135 points and then just absolutely moved all the way down to negative ended up at negative 23 points, about one-tenth of a percent or so. Uh, again, I think just more than anything else is consolidation. Uh, you look at the daily chart, you can see that after a good strong period of highs, the cup and the handle formation, just to give you a little bit of context, I always try to make it up with the big picture, beautiful cup, beautiful handle, third of the move in, that is when you try to cup and a handle, and then a strong move back up again. Taking a little bit of time to judge is just a good thing. I would rather see this than just a straight up and a straight down. So this is a good, good price action still within the channel. So I'm happy that it's going in the way that it's going. Um, and I'm going to continue to watch this. On the S&P 500 side, the S&P 500 also had a little bit of a down day, four points negative, one tenth of one percent. Uh, on the chart, just look at this. It's consolidating after a move up. It's a little bit outside of the channel, but not too worried about it just yet. Uh, again, a cup and handle formation, as you can see on the weekly chart, nice, beautiful cup, good handle, move back up again. So this is going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of time to consolidate move. Sorry about the phone, phone system. <laughs> and then the Dow Jones Industrial Average, aha, uh -huh. the Dow Jones Industrial Average up a little bit, very, very slightly up, uh, good price action. As I mentioned yesterday, of the three, this is the strongest of the indices, forming very, very well, good breakout. This is a loudspeaker pattern moving straight up. It's gonna get a little bit of resistance in the 35,600 zone. I think until then it's good and then probably move a little bit lower, get a little bit of a retest done and then move up towards the end of the year. Uh, there's some noise this morning, I think about the fact that we had a lot of people expecting a rate cut, the federal interest rate cut sometime in the first quarter. I'm not sure about that, but I'm not going to uh, necessarily bank on that to make move forward. Right now, markets are up. The indices are pointing up. The 20-day moving averages, 50, and the other days moving averages are moving up. So I'm I'm um, optimistic, more than cautiously optimistic. I'm optimistic. One of the companies that showed up on the radar is Workday, WDA. But I've been a longtime holder of the stock. So let's go through a five-step analysis, see what they did well, and see what is the reason why they came up on our radar. So the company always start with the annualized income statement first to get a little bit of a big picture. So seven year plan, eight year plan, 1.5 billion in revenue 2016, four times that 6.2 billion, growing at 30%, 20%, moving down a little bit 18 to 20% and moving up back again in 2020 to 20%. This year it's on track to do a little bit less than that. Um, good margins overall, nearly 70, 75% gross margins, losing a little bit of money. It would it made a little bit of money and then started losing money again. So last year it lost a little bit of money. Let's look at it from a quarterly perspective. So this year it's on track to do about 15, so less than 20%. So if you remember, it's in the low 20%, in the very, very low 20% now, it's probably going to move in the 15% range, 15 to 20% range is where the growth is for 2023. Uh, so 15% growth on revenues, Again, 75, 80% gross margins, actually making a profit right now, very small profit in the less than 5% range, but still making a profit. So not a bad sign, good sign. Uh, companies valued about eight, $70 billion, $60 billion on a revenue of about 6.9. So about eight, nine times. Let's go through the balance sheet really quick to find out if there's any red flags. 13 billion in total assets, 3 billion in debt. Let's look at the total assets just to make sure that we don't have too much in the uh, goodwill and other intangible assets. Okay, so there are three billion in intangible assets. Technically, this is about a ten billion dollar asset company, with about another three billion in debt. So no red flag so far. Sixteen percent growth. For sixteen percent growth, you're paying nine times. So that's a little bit high, from a revenue standpoint. Uh, and of course, the fact that they are over nine hundred PEs because the earnings is very very low. Hopefully they'll get that moving in the right direction. Gross margins are in the 75%, net margins are in the 66%, less than 5% actually, to be honest, in the quarterly time frame. So uh, not a great sign on the positive side. From a valuation perspective, it's decent. It's not terrific, it's decent. But this is a company that has been consistently uh, producing 
results. So that's one of the reasons why evaluations are high. So $70 billion company on a long-term chart perspective, this is the monthly chart. I always start with the monthly chart to get a little bit of a view. What kind of a personality of the stock this is? I like to understand that. So had a very nice stage two incline, then a big long consolidation. See this from February, 2014, all the way up to 2017, just consolidating, moving within the range, consolidating and then had a very strong stage two, stage one decline, consolidations, more of a decline, short decline, and then a stage two breakout and uptrend. This is all within the uptrend, a little bit of consolidation in the middle, but a strong uptrend. And then in December, 2021 timeframe, November, 2021 stage four breakdown, a little bit of consolidation all the way up until November, 2022. And since then it's been on an incline all the way to August stage four decline. And now this month is just an absolutely solid month, going from the low of 208 to the high of 260. So that it, it's taken a big move up this month, just this month alone. So where is it on the uptrend? On the, week, on the monthly chart, you can see that it's probably going to be within the uptrend on the zone itself. So staying within the channel. So I like this. There is a little bit of resistance that you can definitely see will be forming even in the 287 zone, maybe a little bit lower, even in the 275 zone, look at this. That's one resistance area that it's got to cross. But otherwise, this looks like a $300 stock in a good period of time. Uh, obviously, the earnings, most recent earnings are the ones that probably will give you a good indication of how they did. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Weekly chart, this was, okay, so this is one of the reasons why. This is a head and shoulder formation. This is shoulder, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, decline. And then it tried to attempt to move up. And since then, it's been a strong move back. This is one of the key resistances that it blew through, 253. So sometimes what you'll find is this resistance becomes the support. So hopefully it finds support here, the 250 zone, or it might go a little bit lower in the 240 zone. So this is definitely a good zone. 240 might be a good support area for it. So where would I expect it to do? So this is a strong four or five days of moving patterns, weeks of moving patterns up, right? So what you should expect to see in this stock, going to the daily stock is, okay, a big gap up after earnings. Let's see what the earnings was. 1.8 billion beat estimates by 18 million, not much. Beat even earnings, surprised earnings on the upside by about uh, 8%. So good earnings, good gap up. Not a perfect candle. I'd like to see a green, strong candle that moves up. But excuse me. Man, lots of interruptions. Sorry about that. Um, and it moves up. So this I would expect, not a terrific candle. I would, have, I would have liked it to be a little bit more stronger. I would have liked a candle like this on October 23. Look at this. This is one strong red green candle, blue can, green candle. I would have liked that. But this one, I should expect a little bit of consolidation here and then a move up to the 300, 270 zone. So wait for it. My suggestion would be in the 250. This could be a very good, 252 could be a very good support for it. The resistance becomes a support. So wait for it to consolidate a little bit, but this is going up. This is definitely, if you're a long-term investor, this is going to the 300 time frame in the next quarter or so. Before earnings, it probably definitely hit 275, uh, maybe a little bit higher than 275 on the next earnings. Next earnings is about 90 days away. Uh, so workday, good stock. You look at the, uh, indices, the moving averages, all pointing up and towards the right. Strong sign. Our size is a little bit overbought. So this is definitely going to move a little bit lower now. I would expect it to come a little bit down to the two, wait for it to reach maybe the 250, 253 zone. Buy a little bit here, wait for it to move back up again. This is definitely overbought. Look at this. This is definitely in the overbought zone down at the bottom. So it's going to consolidate. Look at this. Every, every single time this has done that before, look at that. It's gone down. So this is a stock that you should expect to pull back slightly. And the 250, 263 is where it is. So buy a little bit in the 255 zone and then expect to move up. Thank you very much for watching. Comment and let me know what you think about Workday. If you're holding the stock, let me know. If you thought that the analysis was good, bad, or otherwise, let me know. Appreciate it. Thanks.